Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be doing a vlog style video. I uh, haven't done one of these in I think actually months, so I think we're due for another one. Feeling kind of lazy today, so just making a real quick video, unscripted, going off the script, and we're going to see how this goes. So today I want to talk about DSGs, TSGs, and trigger spamming in close quarters, uh, and also high rate of fire. So. I brought, this kind of topic was brought to my attention uh, because of somebody's question that I answered in Airsoft Tech Talk Q&A. So uh, I'll just say it real quick. Uh, Zach Roberts, he asks, what's the main point of a DSG or a TSG since no one really wants to get shot 50, uh, with 50 RPS to the body? So I answered that question in the video. Uh, if you want to watch that video to uh, see my full response, then go right ahead but I'm pretty much going to say the same things here that I did there and then go a little bit further. Uh, so really, why do we build DSGs and, and now TSGs? Um, the answer is very simple. People build them for the challenge. People build them for uh, having like the highest performing level airsoft gun that they can possibly obtain um, and the trigger response really, which is kind of related to the maximum performance of said DSG or TSG. So I don't know anybody who builds these uh, airsoft guns, DSGs and TSGs, to hurt people. Um, and furthermore, I don't know many places that you can play indoor and actually use full auto. So you don't really even have a, uh, an opportunity to really uh, use it to its fullest extent. Uh, for me, the reason why I build DSGs and TSGs, number one, the challenge, which it's not necessarily challenging anymore, it's just different uh, for me to build over like a standard SSG. Um, TSG, obviously it's a little more challenging now because it's a new topic uh, that we've kind of started doing in the past year, but DSG has been around for a long time. Um, but I like to build them for the challenge, I like to build it because it's different, I like to build it because it's pretty much high performance airsoft. And so it's also why I build DMRs that shoot 500, 550 FPS, because I like pushing the limit on how far I can push an airsoft gun. And I like all the little fancy internal parts that I get to use to achieve those results. So, you know, kind of the main point of the question, though, uh, sounds like it's coming from a place of uh, getting shot with something like this, though. So maybe the person who asked this question um, has experience getting shot, uh, you know, with a 50 RPS DSG or TSG. Uh, unfortunately, you know, people do, you know, I, I think that it's possible that there are people out there that build these to um, kind of bully other people. Um, like I said, I don't believe I'm one of them. I don't know any of them, uh, but I'm not going to exclude the possibility from the scenario. But uh, also, you know, if your field allows it, if your indoor field allows full auto, allows that kind of RPS, then I mean, you're, you're just agreeing to what you're complaining about ultimately. Um, not saying that you're complaining about something here, uh, but if you're playing airsoft at a field that allows this kind of uh, uh, RPS uh, and performance level, then just don't play there if you don't really like it. Um, because I mean, I, also I don't I don't know of any field indoor or outdoor that allows full auto, especially to that degree. Most fields that allow full auto cap off at 30 RPS, which some would argue is still quite a bit, but it's not 50, it's not 60 or 70. So, um, but really, I don't know many people that that do this to cause harm or to you know intentionally hurt people. Uh, so that, that's that's kind of my viewpoint on it. Um, I just don't know many people. I know there's a, there's a famous video out there of some dude just lighting some kid up in the back uh, with his Polar Star, but um, I don't know many of those people. Uh, and then this kind of brings up the next extension to this uh, answer, question slash answer. So Mike Megadeth on Airsoft Tech Talk Q&A, episode 16, asked or, or commented, now here's my issue with that, if it's semi-auto only and someone gets to rip their trigger faster than 10 rounds a second on semi, with some crazy setup, shouldn't I be able to use full auto if I'm shooting at 10 rounds per second? The two seem identical in the eyes of the chrono. I agree. I don't think that there should be semi-auto only uh, fields. 
But again, that's kind of up to the field um, that you play at. Not everybody wants to play in an environment where a quarter of the players have 50 RPS guns or 60 or 70 RPS guns or even 30 RPS guns. So if you have a quarter of a group of people that like to play like that and then three quarters of people that don't, the feel is going to kind of lean one way over the other one uh, in terms of appealing to a majority of people, a majority of players. So, you know, I, I agree, you know, that there really isn't a difference. If you can spam the trigger, you know, 10 times in, in two seconds or one second or 15 times in one second, then what's the difference between that and full auto at 15 RPS? And the answer is, there's really not a difference. Um, I guess you could say the difference is that you have to pull the trigger each individual time to result in getting 15 rounds off in a second. Um, but then there are now things like binary triggers where you pull the trigger, it shoots, you let go of the trigger, and it also shoots. Um, so I think we're starting to blur the lines, like in indoor airsoft especially, starting to blur the lines between what is really full auto and what is really just semi-auto. Because, you know, I can shoot my TSG 15 times a second in a binary trigger mode, um, or 30 times a second in a binary trigger mode, and then I can flip it to full auto and shoot 40 times a second. So, you know, the differences are kind of just semantics and really um, starting to kind of, like I said, they're starting to blur. And so that's kind of how um, uh, I view that topic. Uh, again, I agree with Mike. Uh, he's saying that there's really no difference. And so therefore, why shouldn't you be able to fire full auto in, you know, 10 RPS or 15 RPS when the other guy on the team can can shoot his gun off 15 times a second in semi-auto. Um, like I said, I kind of agree, but I also got to see it from the field's perspective that they got to have some sort of limitation to appeal to the majority of people. And I also agree with that sentiment too. I think that uh, feel like airsoft, in order for airsoft to be more popular, it needs to cater to a larger audience and not just cater to people like me, people like other speed softers, which I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a speed softer, but the people that play this game for a hobby as opposed to on occasion. And so, uh, honestly, if we're going to grow Airsoft, which I think we should, then we have to appeal to the largest majority possible. And that means that we cannot have Airsoft, you know, indoor Airsoft where you have a quarter of the players running 50 to 70 RPS DSGs or Polar Stars, and then have a quarter of the people there with rentals that you know hardly work and then a, you know the other quarter of people there that are just mid-tier and then another quarter of people there that are just trying out airsoft for the first time and they're getting turned away so that's kind of what i think on the topic uh, just wanted to kind of throw my opinion out there and make it a vlog style video like i said i kind of agree with mike uh, but i also kind of see why fields do it just from a monetary slash growing the sport or hobby of airsoft perspective so yeah, that's my opinion on that topic. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's just going to be a real quick video. Well, actually, it's looking about closer to nine minutes than a real quick video. So if you made it this far, thank you very much. Please subscribe and uh, like and comment on this video. Tell me what you think. Uh, I'd like to know your all's opinions on this topic. But uh, that'll do it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay tuned, Tex.